Welcome back. We have another edition here of Getting to Know a Demon Deacon. We've taken our show on the road this time. We're in Johnson City, Tennessee. I'm Stephen right here with Ross Tomaselli. And Ross, since we are here on the road, uh, just talk about a little bit, um, you know, obviously playing a home is, is fun for, for obvious reasons, but what do you like about playing on the road and how do you, uh, how do you compare the two? Um, you know, it's, uh, it's good to get out of school, get out of classes, uh, get our mind on the game the day before the actual game, get here early, you know, spend the night in the hotel, get out on the field, see what the field's like, and then have the day to rest in the hotel and get ready for the game. So it's nice in that aspect that we get out of class and we can focus on the game. You know, you're now in your third year here. You're a junior on the team. Um, what, you know, you've been a part of the three different teams, obviously. What, what do you like so much about this team this season? Um, I think this is a culmination of a couple years of really hard work. I mean, we've definitely gone through some growing pains over the past two years. Uh, last year, we finally made the tournament and got a taste of what that's like. But uh, this year, we definitely have some pretty big goals and aspirations that we're trying to live up to. You know, um, you're the player of the year, I think, in high school in your area. You, uh, you know, played on the U.S. national teams from U14, U14, U15, I think. Talk about that experience a little bit. And then at what point did you realize that you could play, um, play college soccer at this level? Um, yeah, the, those were awesome experiences growing up. Um, I was actually, when I was with those youth teams, I was on the team with uh, Jared Watts, and he went on to play in like the U17 World Cup and captain them there, which was awesome for him. But uh, yeah, it was a great experience. That's when I started to get to know some college coaches and uh, started to get an idea of what college soccer was all about. And it was probably around that time that you know I set my sights on college soccer. And since you've been here, at least this year, we get to see you wear the captain's armband every once in a while. Um, you know, what do you, how do you view your role on the team and, and what do the coaches and your teammates expect out of you in that captain's role? Uh, I think, you know, first off, I'd, I'd say Danny and Jared are our captains. And when one of them, you know, the depth of our team, sometimes not both of them are starting. So if I'm starting and one of them's not, I fill in that role. But I'm part of the leadership council, which is a group of like six of us, I'd say, that uh, are kind of in charge of filling that leadership role on the team both on and off the field so I just try to fill in and help out however I can. And uh, obviously when you first get here there's going to be a change from from club soccer from high school soccer to college soccer what was the biggest change for you uh, transitioning to your career here at Wake Forest? Um, I would say the speed of play and just you know I, it took me almost a year to get used to the athleticism of college soccer I'm not the biggest or the fastest guy so I had to adapt my game to be able to play in the college setting. Yeah. Um, and, and being from North Carolina, you're from Wilmington, North Carolina, how aware of the program here at Wake Forest were you? And uh, when did you decide, man, I got to go play soccer there? Um, I came to my first Wake Forest soccer camp when I was 11 years old. Uh, met Coach Jay then and the assistant coach was Bobby Muse at the time. And it was around that time, you know, like Wake became my favorite soccer program. I'd try to make it to as many games as I could. And that's when I, I really set my sights on Wake. Obviously, you've had you've had a long career already through you know your youth soccer and now in college soccer. Can you pick out maybe your favorite memories so far to this point? Um, in college soccer, I'd have to say it came last year. Um, I would say our NCAA tournament game against South Carolina, just that PK shootout, and you know Lish saving the first PK and then it getting called back, and then him saving it again and going on his long sprint around the field and us having to try to chase him down. It was a it was a pretty fun moment for all of us. And uh, I also, I looked up a couple, some of your stats from high school. A lot of assists, 56 assists in your high school career. I think you said the school record. Um, do you still see yourself as, as a, more of a distributor here on this team or more of a goal scorer? How do you view kind of your, your, your role on the field? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'd say I'm, for the most part, I'd be the one to play that pass rather than score the goal. But it just depends what position I'm in on the field. This, time, this year, I found myself in the box quite a few times. So when I find myself there, it's my job to score the goal. You know, uh, a couple of your teammates, I think, have a, have a blog that, that I'd like to hear a little bit more about. Who, who are the guys that have the blog and kind of what's the premise behind it? Yeah, uh, Kobe and uh, Sean Wilkinson, we call them Giggles, they, they started a blog at the beginning of the school year called uh, Forest Folk. And uh, they take pictures of people on campus, I guess, dressing like hipsters or stuff like that. I, got, I was put in there one Sunday because I was wearing jorts because, you know, you got to wear jorts for football Sunday. Um, <laughs> But, you know, Kobe, Kobe, he likes to think that he's the mastermind behind the whole thing. But really, I think we all know, you know, Giggles is the photographer. He's doing all the hard work, and Kobe just kind of sits there and takes all the credit for it. Do you think, uh, you think they have a chance to make it big with this thing? Um, surprisingly, it's been really popular on campus. A lot of people know about it, and they've gotten called by a few local newspapers about what's going on. So who knows? We'll see where it goes. 
And uh, you know, you mentioned that you you were on their blog uh, wearing your jorts that one day. Um, but I, I also saw you were on another blog, uh, it's, uh, some hair styling blog for for, uh, for talk talk about you know more about it than I do. Talk a little bit about that and uh, you know, how'd you how'd you end up on this blog? Um, yeah, uh, in high school, this guy saw me. His name's Steve Ward. Uh, I guess he uh, he liked my hair, and uh, he uh, turns out he's like. A phenomenal hairstylist you know worked in New York for a number of years but uh he uh he wanted to photograph my hair so um he still cuts my hair now when I'm back home and uh I, I think people got a hold of the pictures from that blog and I, I've gotten ripped apart for it by by some guys on the team but I do have a uh, Danny Wenzel came home with me this summer and he got his hair cut by him so I have him to vouch for me that uh he is pretty good at cutting hair and there's a reason why I go back to see him I think his his quote on his blog was Ross has very thick hair with some wave and great texture. Do you do your best to uh, keep that up so you're not disappointing him when you go back home and get your haircut? Um, I've mixed my hair up. Right now it's shorter. I had a really I had some long hair this summer and I I enjoyed it, but it just got too hot out, so I had to cut it off. But the long hair will be back soon. All right, fair enough. Well, uh, thanks for uh, letting us talk about that a little bit. Good luck uh, the rest of the season. Uh, for Ross Tomaselli, I'm Stephen Rice saying go Deeks.